Welcome to First United Methodist Church Pearland New Song Worship Online. I'm Pastor Thea and I'm so glad that you've tuned in. Whether this is your first time visiting or you often attend online, I want to welcome you to our online service today and invite you to come and check us out in person soon. Here at First United Methodist Church of Pearland, we know God is real and we exist to follow Jesus, lead others to build real relationships, grow in real discipleship, and experience real transformation. Today in worship, you're going to experience wonderful music, authentic prayer, and a word inspired by the Holy Scriptures. I hope that you'll continue to check us out. And then once again, I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Welcome. cross. It was meant to horrify the world. It was meant for humiliation. It was meant to last for days. It was meant for slow asphyxiation. It was meant to prolong torture. It was the Roman soldier's job. It was meant to be used by Caesar, but instead, it was used by God. It was meant to stop a movement, but instead, it became the way. It was meant to act on fear, but instead, it awakened faith. It was meant to be vicious and violent, but instead, it became our peace. It was meant to uproot hope, but instead, it became the seed. It was meant to punish captives, but instead, it unleashed freedom. It was meant to build up Rome, but instead, it built God's kingdom. It was meant to discourage rebels. It was meant to stop insurrection. It was meant to put down Jesus, but instead, it set up his resurrection. It was meant to jeer and mock him, but instead it was his glory. It was meant to erase a chapter, but instead it became the story. It was meant to hold up convicts, but instead it raised up a king. It was meant to shut our mouth, but instead it's why we sing. It was meant to be a judgment, but instead it became our mercy. It's why the song of heaven is the lamb. The lamb is worthy. It was meant to kill an enemy, crush dissenters and diversion, but instead it became the banner of God's love for every person. It was meant to be appalling, nailing hands and feet to wood. It was meant to be used for evil, but instead it was used for good. Happy Easter, new song. I want to invite you to stand up, say hi to a couple of people around you. Aren't you excited for what happened in Jesus' resurrection? Come put your hands together. The 
Saturday was silent, surely it was true. But since when has impossible ever stopped to you? Friday's disappointment, and Sunday's empty doom. Since when has impossible ever stopped to you? This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Do you hear him? This is the phrase make the dead men walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. And it costs some fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Come on! Resurrection power runs in my veins too. Yeah. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make the dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones trying to live. Right Come on, church. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah. If there's anything that He can do, just ask the stone that was rolled. In the tomb, in the garden, what happens when God says tomorrow? I feel it moving in now. I feel it doing it now. I feel it doing it now. Do it now. Do it now. This is the sound of the travels rattling.
such a treat to have everybody up there. Uh, my name is Amanda Tompkins, and I serve here on the Connections team. I'm also our MOPS leader. Hi, Kat. She's back from Hawaii. Hi, everybody. So it's so good to see you guys here, and this is my friend Brian White. Hey, guys. Good morning. I am so, so happy that you are here with us this morning. Um, if you are not excited, I don't know how. I can tell you right now that that intro video reminded me of game day and pregame, and I was just getting stoked and ready to flip chairs over. It is a celebration day. I'm telling you right now, the resurrection day is a celebration day. We are so glad that you are here. If you are visiting us for the first time, we just want to say welcome and thank you for being here. We know that you have a million choices on an Easter Sunday morning of things that you could do, and so the fact that you are here is a huge deal to us. And so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We would love for you to participate in the mission of First United Methodist Church in the New Song Worship, which is to follow Jesus, to build relationships, to grow in discipleship, and to experience transformation. We would love for you to be a part of that. Yes, and if you guys notice in your uh, chair, we put out all of these connect cards with your bulletin. You guys, summer's just around the corner. We guys want you guys to get connected if you want to know what camps, is, camps are coming up, what we're offering this summer. Um, but also, if you are looking for a church home or you just want to talk to us and get to know us more, please fill out that connect card. And you can also text the number on the screen, too, to just say connect, and we can get your phone number from there. Um, but you can also just put the connect card in our offering box. We don't pass the plate here, so if you're waiting for that, you know, COVID changed a lot of things. So we have a box out here, um, so you're going to drop your offering or uh, in your Connect card in there. Or you can come visit us at the Welcome Desk. We have special gifts for your first time, and we'd love to meet you. Um, today we are talking about the resurrection, obviously. And so we have a resurrection wall um, that Lexi made, I think. Um, she worked really um, is outside. If you guys can take a Polaroid and just put um, your photo on that wall so you can symbolize that you two have been resurrected today. And also, if you are posting a picture up, we want to know that you've been resurrected. Obviously, that's a huge thing. We're going to celebrate that in the same way that we celebrate this holiday. But we would also love for you to participate by writing the names of individuals that you hope to be resurrected. Those individuals that you know, that you spend time with, that you live life with, that you just want them to have the same relationship with Jesus that you have. We would invite you to write their names and to post those up on the board as well. We would love to know about that so that we can pray for them and pray over them and their lives. And honestly, guys, I, I can't tell 
tell you how excited. This is one of my favorite holidays. I know it's one of Pastor Thea's favorite holidays as well. I would love for you to stand, and I'm gonna say continue to worship, but I'm also gonna say continue in this celebration of Resurrection Sunday. It is a huge, huge day, and we want you to be a part of that. So please stand with us as we continue to worship. I wanna read to you this, um, this Bible verse that is in Luke 24, and it says, at the crack of dawn on Sunday, the woman came to the tomb carrying the burial spices that they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of Master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then, out of nowhere, it seemed, two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, Why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He's not here, but raised up. Remember what he told you when you were still back in Galilee, that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days, rise up. Then they remembered Jesus' words. Um, even though we try to imagine and picture what happened on that day, I cannot even begin to comprehend how they felt. Whenever they saw Jesus a few days before, a few days back on the cross, his master, the, ones that, the one that they've been following for quite a few time now, and now he's dead. There's a lot of disbelief, not a lot of hope, but then Sunday's coming. Can you imagine, and we were talking about this with my family in the back, and we were trying to imagine and picture, how did it feel in heaven with God and all the host of angels? They stopped everything that were, they were doing, and all of their attention when it was in, in only one place, the cross, the tomb. Have you ever felt in a moment of despair where you cannot even fathom words, you cannot even put words together of how do you feel? You just look, you just see. And then all of a sudden, the Son of Man rises up from the dead. I cannot even imagine how it felt on heaven in that moment. All the angels celebrating and singing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. And that's what we're trying to replicate here today. It's not about the show or the lights or, of course, we're grateful with all those things. We're grateful for Jesus first. Can I hear an amen? We're grateful for what He did. We're grateful for what He brought us, even though we didn't deserve it. But He still in His grace and His love, gives us a second chance, a second opportunity. I want to invite you as we sing this song, I want you to think about that. And I want you to lift up your voice and to sing all together. Holy, holy. You are holy, God. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and what he did on the cross. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest. Your name stands above the moon. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above the moon. And the angels cry. If you've been forgiven, then 
If you be redeemed, sing the song forever to the end. If you walk in freedom, if you bear his name, sing the song forever to the end. Sing the song forever, amen. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy forever. Hear your people sing. Sing new song, come on. All thrones, all powers, and positions, your name stands above the Lord. We surrender to your name, is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above the Lord. All thrones. Dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, Holy, for creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high. a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history Their own a cross they made for sinners
and welcome. Good morning. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? I have my friend Charlie here because here at First United Methodist Church Pearland, we just like to have fun. I am Shannon Garza and I am the children's ministry director here and um, I'm just really excited. I'm excited that all of you are here, that we get to celebrate today together and that I get to invite all of our kids who are way ahead of me to um, please join us for a sermon session and um, parents your children will be returned to you at the end of service in time for communion and I think we got everybody so we're glad you're here thank you for sharing your babes with us and we'll see you in a bit Charlie's got this Well, happy Resurrection Day. I'm Pastor Thea, and I'm so glad you can clap. You can be excited. It's a good day. i um, so glad that you're here today to celebrate, to worship, to praise, to have fun on this glorious day. Um, we're so glad that you decided to be here. And um, Arnold reading out of Luke is the reason why we're here, right? This truth that when the women came to the tomb, the body was not there. It was empty. And the angels confirmed what Jesus had been telling them would be true, that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. And the good news is that is just the beginning. That is not the end of Jesus' life or ministry or mission but instead, that mission will continue through his followers, through those who believe. It will even continue through you. Oh, glorious God, we thank you that we could come together today in praise. That we would have this space and this place and the freedom to recognize the truth that you are a living God. That you are not dead in a grave, a pile of bones decaying away, but you, Lord, have risen you have regained life and you give us life too. 
And so while we have come together today to celebrate the truth about you, O oh gracious God, we pray you might reveal to us what you also have planned in our life, our resurrection and new life that you promised to give. And oh good, loving and kind God, we will try as hard as we can to receive it, to believe it, and to be a part of your great rescue plan. It is in your wonderful, mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to read together today from the book of Acts. Find that in your Bible or your Bible app, chapter 1, starting in verse 6. This book starts with Jesus appearing again to the disciples multiple times after his resurrection, affirming that everything he had ever told them was true. But then he tells them, it's time for me to go away, to step aside, ascend to the Father, and really leave things up to you. And here in verse 6, we read this. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is good news for the entire world including you. I love how after Jesus is resurrected, he's in the flesh again, walking amongst them, that the only questions that these disciples have are not how. How did this happen, Jesus? Or even where did you go for those three days? Were you in the tomb until the last moment? Did you go somewhere else? What was it like? How did your broken and bruised body come back together? They have no questions about those logistics. The question they ask is, when will you restore the kingdom to Israel? When will you restore the kingdom to Israel? When? Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? And maybe that's a fair question. These people had continued to live under foreign rule. They had continued to be oppressed and abused. And they were longing for yesterday. Years and years before when they were the ones in power. They were the ones in control where it was them who had the ability to rule all things, even those who didn't believe like they. I imagine that they were longing for when they lived in grand palaces, adorned with gold and silver in every royal color you could imagine. They were longing for the days when they had the power, the might, the armies to go and take over other territories or anybody they thought were a threat. And they were longing for the days where they lived in secure cities with big iron gates that not only kept them safely in but locked anybody they did not want there out. When... Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? When will you restore the kingdom to me? Make things like I want them to be. Put me back in power. When will you restore the kingdom? And maybe it's not so awful that they were longing for yesteryears, right? All of us know that things were better then than they are now, right? We can constantly look at the way things are and wish they were the way they used to be. I don't know about you, but I'm still longing I could be high school skinny. <laughs> and if you're in high school or younger, I'm just going to tell you this, enjoy it, because it will not last forever, right? Or how we long for the early days of a relationship when it's all just butterflies from a glance across the room 
It's flirty text and staying up all night just kissing. Or maybe we long for times when we felt just more in control, less demands, less responsibilities, and more people behaving like we want them to. Or at least that's what we think they were doing. To long for yesterday, to want it to be restored. Well, that's natural. And yet, we have to be willing to let yesterday go. To drop this desire for things to be the way they used to be. Especially if that restoration is about me being in charge. Me getting my way. Me getting the kingdom restored to me. You see, Jesus even tells them, you're not... I'm not going to tell you the time or the place because in all honesty, that'll just keep you waiting. Sitting on your hands, waiting for me to come in and save the day. And I think so often that's where we still are today. Waiting, crying, praying, begging, come, oh Jesus, come. Come, oh Jesus, come and fix everything. Come, oh Jesus, come and restore things. Come, Oh, Jesus, come. As if Jesus is going to arrive on a shining, glistening white horse. As if he's going to ride in with his long hair just streaming in the wind. And he's going to have a big iron sword to finally get rid of all of those who are not doing things the way you want them to be. Come, oh, Jesus, come and save us from this reality. But here's the truth. This life is not a fairy tale. No white horse is on its way to sweep you up the stairwell. No, this is not Hollywood. This is the real world where Christ has come, shown us exactly what God is all about, and then sent you on mission to fulfill God's great plan of salvation and victory. He tells his disciples, I won't tell you when it's coming because I think you'll just wait, but instead I will give you the power of the Holy Spirit. You will be a part of this great plan. And I bet those disciples were freaking out. They were like, no way. Me? No, not me. I mean, they were uneducated, most of them were poor, they had no real power or privilege. How in the world are they going to be a part of God's restoration? Not me, no, it couldn't be. And maybe you're wondering the same thing. Me? Me? Yes, you too. And you, 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 and all the yous who didn't show up today. God's great plan of complete restoration and victory comes through you, through the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promises is coming even to you. And friends, you already know the good news. Jesus is alive. He is not in the grave. The body is missing. He is not decaying. He is alive. He is risen. And the thing about Jesus is Jesus shares every single bit of himself with you and me. And so if Jesus is alive, you are too. You see, Jesus shares every single bit of his life, his compassion, his kindness, his words, his food, his miracles, his ability, and the whole entire truth about who God is and what God is up to. And so just as Jesus is willing to die to give us new life, that new life has already been given to you. Jesus is alive and you are too. I want you to say it with me. Jesus is alive. I am too. Jesus is alive. I am too. Jesus is alive. I am too. And it's okay if it gets a little wild and a little bit loud because that's what happens when you receive this holy power truth, God's breath inside of you. You see, that's 
what the Holy Spirit is. God's breath poured into you. And that means that it's God's breath filling your thin lungs, not only giving you the ability to live, but also expelling all the toxins from you. It's God's breath that is pumping your heart, sending blood and passion to all of your extremities. It is God's breath that is moving your muscles, giving them the power to do incredible things. God's breath is inside you. This is the power that not only Jesus promises, but brings if you're willing to receive. And if you're willing, if you long for this power, if you want to feel God's breath inside of you, I invite you to do exactly what the first believers did so they could have it too. Pray. Pray. All the time, without ceasing, with intentionality, pray. Pray the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning and you take that first conscious breath. Pray to God with thanks. Thanks that you would have another day, that God would fill your lungs and give you life. Pray as you make that warm, delicious, creamy, hot cup of caffeine that you believe is the only thing that's going to get you through the day. Pray for God's breath to energize you, to fuel you and help you focus on what's important and where you really need to spend your time and energy that day. Pray as you're preparing for your day, whether that's just you or helping many others get prepared too. Pray as you make your way to the first places that you will go, school, work, Kroger, the laundromat, wherever you end up. And pray that while you are there, you would see the others as people, not as burdens, not as problems, Not as issues you have to get around, but people. Human, fallible, beautiful people, just like you'd hope God sees you. Pray at every meal, asking God to continue to fuel you and drive you forward with whatever it is that God has intended for you to do. And pray before you go to sleep thanking God for the many breaths you were able to take, even if that's all you feel like you did successfully that day. If you want God's breath in you, the power of the Holy Spirit that God has promised and sent, pray and you will receive. And this breath, it will not force you It will not coerce you, but instead it will just become who you are. You will be compelled to live, work, laugh, and love the way that God intends. Like how Mr. Rogers just had a compulsion to offer truth, kindness, reality to children through a television show where he was willing to deal with real stuff like death, divorce, and even race because he knew kids needed it and he felt compelled to breathe into that space. Or how Lisa loves to create delicious treats and brings them to everything Special events, meeting, it just happens to be Tuesday and you look like you need a cookie. She can't even taste or smell them herself anymore, underlining this truth that she is just simply compelled to bring goodness, love, sweetness to anyone willing to receive. She's not trying to prove she's the best at anything or get you to buy anything This is just how she breathes. Or how Brandon is quick to build a team, to build a ramp for anyone in need. Not so that they'll believe in Jesus, not so that they'll come to church, not so that he can earn his own way into heaven, just because this is how 
he breathes. This is the power of the Holy Spirit in regular people like you and me. And this is what happens when we're willing to receive. Jesus tells his disciples, not only will you receive this power, but you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses. And what I think is really interesting here is that Jesus tells this to his disciples long after his trial, long after he's been beaten, spit upon, hung on a cross and thrown in an empty grave. Remember, he's already resurrected. He's already proven that he has conquered the worst thing that could ever happen to him. And now he stands before them and tells them they will be his witness. And so I don't think Jesus needs them to put on a blue suit, come into a courtroom and prove that Jesus has good character, that his merit is worthy. He doesn't need his followers and believers to come and and convince a jury of what the sentence should be. No, I believe that Jesus is saying that we, those who dare to believe in a resurrected living God, filled by the power of the Holy Spirit in us, should be walking evidence of this truth. Our lives should tell this story, should be an example that others can see and believe. This truth that not only is Jesus alive, but I've been resurrected too, and this resurrection is available to you. And I believe this is what Jesus means when he says, you are my witnesses, because he tells them what they are to do. That they are to stay in Jerusalem and be witnesses there, but they are also to go to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And it's important to note that these places, Judea, Samaria, they're not just names on a map that suggest that they have a long, dusty, dirty road to walk on to get there. No, Judea, and Samaria are places these believers did not want to go. They're places that they would avoid regularly, that they would take the long way around to ensure they did not have to encounter the people there, the people there who were different than them, the people there who didn't think like them, the people there who probably didn't smell like them and they definitely didn't believe like them. And so they avoided those places tremendously. And Jesus cuts right to the chase and says, there, that's where I need you to go. Not just here in Jerusalem in your own little comfort town or hiding amidst a, amidst a big city. Instead, I also need you to go to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth that you don't even know where that is yet. I need you to go to the places that you do not want to go, the places you have decided are not worthy of your, of your presence or your existence. I need you to go there too. And the same is true for you and me. If we will be witnesses to God's truth, we must be willing to go where we do not want to go to. That means going into your coworker's office and getting to know him instead of continuing to create a long list of all the ways he irritates you and is wrong. It means going to your neighbor and having a conversation with her, getting to know her story instead of just complaining about it on Facebook or the neighborhood group. It means talking to the mom who's different and offering to understand her a little more. Inviting the dad who's always by himself to coffee or breakfast or lunch just so that he can feel included too. It means talking to the person that you don't like and don't want to like. It means talking to your family, your spouse, your children about the hard things, where you've gone wrong and how you truly want things to be different to be witnesses of God's amazing truth, to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, to be alive as Jesus has given you, will send you to go to the places you do not want to go and be evidence, walking, believable truth that God is of restoration, of redemption, 
of resurrection and new life for those people too. And the best part about being a witness is that you are freed from the judgment. You, as witnesses, are freed from the conviction. You are freed from the sentencing. You are freed from having to decide if the other per person is truly worthy or even if they're willing to accept the truth you are presenting. To be a witness is to bear the truth, to say it out loud and in your spirit, even in the places you do not wish to go. This is what Christ has intended for us. This is the continuation of God's great plan of salvation. This is how the kingdom is restored, not to you, but by you, through you. For if Jesus is alive, then so are you. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are called to be witnesses, living truth, willing to go to the ends of the earth if we have to, to be sure others know this truth too. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking really practically and technically about how to be witnesses, how to share this gospel truth, how to be sure that others know about this risen Jesus, that he is not in the grave, but instead alive and well and continuing to breathe through you and me. I hope that you'll plan to attend or listen in online as we read through the book of Acts, watching and learning how those first followers dared to believe this is true and how we might start to believe it's true too. Let's pray. Good and wonderful God, we are in awe of this truth that you are risen, that you are not stuck in a grave, but you are alive and well and with us today. In fact, it is your breath in our lungs, giving us life, giving us the power to move and bear your truth so that the world would know. Oh, gracious God, help us as we strive to figure out what that really means, not for all, for me. Inspire us, heal us, empower us, and give us courage to discover how we might too be a part of your plan of great rescue. We pray these things in confidence of your holy, good, and powerful name. Amen. As a piece of living out this truth that we are called to be witnesses, earlier this year, we changed the name of our Do Good Project to Church in Action. And this was not just a fun thing we decided to do because we were bored and needed to make new logos. No, we did this because we wanted a name that better resembled what this piece of our ministry is about. Doing good is great, but being a church in action really underlines the idea that we are to move that we are to be mobile, that we are to do more than sit in our own locked doors, but instead go out into the streets where the people are and truly offer good news in real and tangible ways. And so this year we've already started continuing our partnerships with our uh, long-term partners like uh, Christian Helping Hands and a couple others that we continue to support. But we've also gotten creative, and we decided that we wanted to move a little bit. And so in January, we met uh, for five weeks at Torchy's Tacos, and we did Let's Talk About Our Faith. Give me a clap if you attended some of those. We had some really great and honest conversations, and we did it out in public where other people could see and hear. And while I don't believe that there was any, you know, brand new converts to Christ, which is, again, was not our goal— what I thought was really interesting was that the staff saw us each week over and over gathering together, church-going Christians, eating tacos, having a beverage, and talking about our faith. Even though we didn't agree, even though the topics got really wild and probably a little loud, they saw us willing to do so out in the streets. 
We also started a podcast. If you're not listening, I encourage you to follow and subscribe to Real Talk on your podcast platforms. And there we're just trying to have real and honest conversations about faith, about questions, about doubt. And in a place where we can reach those beyond the limits of space, and time. We are all so divided, I think, the most by time these days. And so this is a way that it can reach people right where they are in the time and snippets that they allow. And so if you haven't been listening, again, I encourage you to listen, but also share. I've noticed that people who are unwilling to maybe come into the church building are actually interested in conversations about faith, and this should be a safe, easy way that they can do so. And we also hosted a uh, Wesley A and M, uh, excuse me, A and M Wesley Foundation, a group of college kids who came in for a week. They gave up their spring break to do church in action things. They went and made repairs, built ramps, completely tore down a falling down shed for a family in need. And um, you'll see it there. I mean, their smiles are genuine. And we were able to offer our space for them to stay as well as a few connections so that they could truly be the hands and feet. This is what church in action is all about, being willing to move beyond our own doors, our own spaces and places of comfort to get out into the world where the people are and offer them the hope of Jesus Christ too. I'm going to invite you today to make a gift uh, that would support this mission. Uh, you can pull out your phone and text the word GIVE to our text line. That'll give you a one, uh, an, an easy link that you can use. And uh, you can make a one-time and or reoccurring gift there. You can also drop a gift in the offering box as you leave. If you have a cash or check and you're um, still, you know, uh, happy to carry those things, we welcome those gifts as well. All of your gifts make it possible for us to continue to not only provide this opportunity to worship in our space and all we do on campus, but continue to move us out into the streets as well. And so thank you for your willingness to give. We know the truth, friends, that Jesus is risen, that he is not in a grave, he is not decaying away, but instead he is alive, and this gives us new life too. And every week that we gather together in this space, we remember this truth, not just with words and song, but also with Holy Communion. This remembrance that through the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we are given communion with God directly and completely. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to prove we're worthy. We don't have to be checked off on a box that says we are accepted. You have already been redeemed. Christ's love and grace has already been poured out from you. And so that means that all of you are welcome to receive. Welcome to receive this grace, this love, this redemption, the restoration Christ has for you. But also know that means that Christ has restoration through you. And so come willing to receive that holy power too. As we prepare for this special participation, participation I'd like to take a few minutes to pray. And actually this is for you. For you to confess of your sins. The places that you feel or know or think you might be far from God. Maybe it's just to say to God directly, you are God and I am not. Or maybe it's a time that you can use to be quiet and listen to what God might have for you. Let's take a few moments to pray, and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Good, loving, present, and still pursuing us, God. We are just in awe of you, all that you are. 
all that you've already done and even the great plans you will still do. Oh, gracious God, we come to you as just humble sacrifices, offering our lives to you, believing that in your resurrection, we are resurrected too. With this truth, oh, gracious God, we do still need you. We need your presence, your power, your breath inside us. And gracious God, we need one another too. We need a community. We need the fellowship of believers willing to come together upon one accord, which is our faith in you. Even when we doubt, even when we're angry, even when we're terrified by this truth, O oh gracious God, we thank you that you would unite us not only with you, but with one another. And it's in that spirit of unity that we, the many, come together to pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It was the night before Jesus was arrested, before he was given a mock trial, that he gathered together with his friends, his followers. He even told them, I no longer call you disciples, I call you friends because this is the relationship I intend for us to be connected to be in union, to be one. And in that meal, Jesus took the bread. He lifted it up, something they would have at most every meal, but this time he blessed it. He gave thanks and then he gave it to them saying, this is my body. It's been given for you so that you will be forgiven of all your sins, but not just for you, for many. Every time you eat of this, remember me and all the things I've taught you, all that you believe. And at the end of the meal, Jesus took a cup. He lifted it up. He gave thanks and praise. And then he told them, this is the cup of a new covenant. My blood will be shed for you and for the forgiveness of sin of many. Every time you drink of it, remember me and all these things that I have told you, all these things you already believe. And so we come together now with the confidence of those first believers still celebrating this truth of who Jesus Christ is and what he is continuing to do. We partake in this wonderful meal as a representation of Christ's grace, and love already poured out for you and the recognition that we are part of God's great plan of rescue. Holy and gracious God, we pray you would pour yourself upon these simple things. Make them for us, redeeming grace of Jesus Christ. Wipe away our sins and free us into liberty of service to you, to be witnesses of your truth actively, right here, right now, restoring your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. As the servers come forward, ushers are going to release you. You'll come and receive a piece of bread that will be dipped in the cup. You'll consume those elements together and return to your seats for worship, for prayer, whatever you need. I am going to encourage you not to leave. We have something very special at the end of service I want you to be around for. Blessed I 
Everybody get down, come on. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was a Lord. But you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken. You were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name. donuts there's plenty and be sure to add your name to the resurrection board i hope to see you next week until then go with the resurrection truth jesus is alive and so are you in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen engage moving faith that we're hosting or maybe truly follow Jesus. I hope that you're willing